the race for humanoid robots, robots that look like humans and can work like humans, is heating up. And my prediction is that in 2026, we will see the first serious deployment of these robots. And one of the lead contenders in this super exciting space is Figure AI with Figure 2, their new robot. Their main competitor and the big, big lead guy in the whole market is of course Tesla with the Tesla Optimus, where most people who know anything about that space assume Tesla will take the, over the whole market with their massive supply chains, their massive cash pile, and of course Elon Musk heading that project himself. But Figure AI is the interesting competitor, and today we are going to dive into Figure AI's secret plan to beat Tesla despite overwhelming superiority by Tesla over Figure AI. And we will also discuss if that plan is going to work. So the scenario we have is this is the big benchmark in the space, Tesla Optimus. Now, some people say Tesla Optimus fell behind. I don't buy it. Tesla has made this a top priority to turn itself from a automotive company into an abundance, sustainable abundance company with Optimus robots and autonomous robot taxis at the core. And there's massive R&D, multi-billion dollars per year going into Tesla Optimus, the one robot to take it all over. Now, let's go to Figure AI and see what happened so far and why I think I figured out the secret strategy Figure AI pursues now to beat Tesla and why the strategy is a major pivot away from what they were doing before. And it starts all with this news back in the days that was uh, on November 2024, the 9th, last year, 2024. And the big news there was that Figure AI, let us all know, together with BMW and Spartanburg, South Carolina, that they are deploying a whole fleet of their robots into the BMW plant, where BMW assembles a bunch of cars. And that was big news that had them raise money and made it very exciting because it makes it sound like Figure AI is on track to cracking this all decisive super value generating mega market of industrial applications. Once you have a human or robot that you can deploy and replace blue collar workers in factories, it is obvious that people are going to pay enormous amounts of money for each robot, not just one time, but the RAS model. I coined the term, by the way, robot as a serv uh, ro ro robot as a service. That this RAS model allows whoever provides the robots to charge something similar to a salary maybe 20% of the salary per month. So once you have a fleet of robots installed, and you're replacing a million workers, let's say, maybe a hundred million workers, but let's say a million workers, and you're able to charge 2000 bucks per worker, which totally undercuts anyone in the Western world. 2000 bucks for a full-time employee that works twice as long with no mistakes, instead of 10,000 bucks or 6,000 bucks, everyone would do it. And if you have a million of these deployed and you charge 2000, you can do the math. You're making 2 billion with 90% margin a month. So as you can imagine, this is a very enticing business model. So people got very excited and said, oh my God, Figure AI with their robot, Figure 2, is ahead of the pack. They're already deploying with BMW. Look here, Figure 1, you know, is doing all kinds of stuff. And the CEO, Brett of Figure AI, said they have a fleet deployed of these robots that do end-to-end -end work with BMW in Spartanburg. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. And as you can see here, this was a BMW announcement, so it all sounds super legitimate. But then we had a little hit piece coming out uh, very recently in Forbes. Let's see if we can get that. Here is, or well, in Fortune, uh, here, here is the piece. Get into the scammy fortune thing. Here is the piece. And the takeaway from that piece was, is the CEO of the heavily funded humanoid robot startup Figure AI exaggerating his startup's work with BMW? And that came out April 6, 2025. Right? And this piece basically talked about the fact that BMW is not commenting on this piece and that there's actually only one robot, not a fleet of robots, only one figure, one robot, and 
all this robot does is picking up some pieces after work when the factory is basically empty. Everyone is going home. It's in a little side room or something and it's picking up some pieces and trying to pick them up. No end-to-end -end process as Brad Edcock implied the CEO. Uh, no fleet deployed. So it seems like a total gimmick. That's what it is. At least that's how it looks like. And of course, that sends some waves of concern through the whole thing and seem to give the critics you know, a leg up here in the whole space that said both figure one and Tesla Optimus and everyone else is full of it. And this stuff is not happening. Humanoid robots are a fantasy that is a decade away. Whatever it is and whatever the bigger judgment on the whole space is, I have a very different opinion, especially when it comes to Tesla. But now I want to jump into what the secret plan of figure AI actually seems to be. And for that, we are going to look at the very recently relaunched website looks like. Look here, beautiful website. This is the new website of Figure AI. And when you look at that website, besides it being beautiful and showcasing Figure 3, the third generation of the robot that seems to now become very commercial, what do you notice about this website? Well, 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 first of all, it looks beautiful. It looks very Apple-esque, like an Apple website. Second of all, it says, the future of home help is here. And notice, I didn't jump into some sub product. I didn't sub, uh, you know, jump into some sub page of this website. This is figure.ai, right? So this is the main, main home page of this company. What do you not see? You don't, you don't see a single word about an industrial application of this robot. It's completely focused on home. You scroll down. Wow. Beautiful again the next section. But look at this again, the intelligence behind figure three, Helix, navigate unpredictable, ever-changing home environment. So on the second section of the website, they're doubling down and say it's home, 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 home. Okay. Think about that. It's beautiful. It's probably in California. Here, the third section, I think you are getting the vibe. We are just going to look at this beautiful website, understanding your home like you do. And you have this little butler guy, you know, the team here is about the team. Yada, 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 and that's it. So why do I think this is more than just a website relaunch? The combination of BMW not commenting on this Fortune article that nothing is actually going on, it's all fake news. The whole industrial deployment is fake news. And now this website relaunch with a complete focus on home application, on selling people this robot for their home. I think what we can read out of that, between the lines of these actions, Figure AI is pursuing. Now, with a single-minded focus, a strategy of deploying first to consumers for home application, this robot. And here is why I think that makes complete sense and makes Figure actually a serious competitor for Tesla. And if you're a big Tesla fan or someone who really understands technology, the different R&D budgets, you might think, Joe, you're really stupid. You're falling for Brad Adcock's fake news scam company. How can you even think that figure AI is in any way competitive with Tesla? Calm down. I will tell you why I think that. First of all, on the merits, I have absolutely no doubt that Tesla Optimus and the Tesla team and the Tesla technology is operating in a completely different universe than figure AI or other competitors, by the way. There is not even a close comparison. I think it's actually very similar to Tesla Autonomy and the other self-driving car companies. They are not playing in the same universe. Tesla is light years ahead, both on AI technology, inference and training compute, and of course on supply chain hardware, all kinds of stuff. But still, this pivot of Brad Adcock aiming at consumers is smart and could turn that into a viable company that becomes a competitor for Optimus. And here's why. First of all, we have to understand how infinitely easier in this specific case it is to launch a consumer product than an industrial product. Because here's the thing, if you have a new human or robot and this thing doesn't really work, let's face it, the first version is not going to really work. It's not going to create a lot of value, neither at home nor in the factory. But here's the problem. If you do not deploy serious value in the factory, if it just stands there and doesn't understand what's going on, can't figure out what the hell is going on, no pun intended, figure out, figure two, then a CEO, a board, a board of, you know, or the investors, the shareholders of a company are going to say, hey, 
Don't fire all our employees. Don't buy all these stupid robots. They're underperforming. They can't even really do the task. And it's going to take years to train them. It's going to take years to debug them. We don't have years. We have exactly zero minutes because we are running giant BMW, Mercedes, Bosch, whatever operations, right? GE, you name it, you know, whatever. Any big companies, Budweiser, like they cannot afford to have their employees not there and then stupid robots messing up, okay? But the same is not true for home applications. It is not true. A lot of people do not understand the home application market for robots. They do not understand how infinitely easier it is to have a robot deployed at home. And the reason for that is something very different than you think. Some people say, Joe, you're stupid. You think it's hard to do Budweiser, you know, conveyor belts as a robot. You think it's hard to work in a factory as a robot. Try to replace me. I'm a mom at home. I'm doing all kinds of things. It's much harder to replace them. I'm, I'm not even talking about the emotional bonding thing with children. I'm just I mean whatever someone does at home, like laundry, cleaning, dishes, whatever, walking the dog, isn't that much more complicated than doing something in a factory where you have very limited scope? And the answer is yes, you're right. The deployment of a humanoid robot at home with the intent to have the same productivity as anyone who works at home, as compared to a factory, is much harder. Deploying a robot at home at the same or higher efficiency as a human at home for homework is much harder than a factory. So how do we square these two things that I just said? It's much easier to sell these things into homes and the hurdle is much lower. But at the same time, the work is much more complicated at home and will be achieved later by the robots. Well, the reason is very simple. You have millions of consumers, millions, mark my words, millions, who are willing to drop 40,000 bucks on this robot and probably 1,000 or 2,000 a month just for giggles, which means the innovator space, the innovator space for the home application is vastly bigger than for industrial. It's vastly more forgiving because no one cares. Just go to New York or even better, go to Silicon Valley and Los Angeles and meet people in Brentwood and Beverly Hills. I don't know, Brentwood doesn't even exist anymore, but probably they're rebuilding and Brentwood is still there. So go there, go to Orange County, go to San Diego, go to San Francisco and meet people and ask them, would you drop 40,000 bucks to have a robot run around and show your friends you have a robot? Everyone, 100% is going to say, sure, where do I swipe my card? And so you will have millions of people who buy that robot vastly earlier than the robot is actually ready for that market. And that means that companies like Figure AI, like startups, also other startups. I will talk about one more, one more startup that is probably the number one competitor for actual figure for this exact application. Why these people actually make a smart move here. If you know it will take you another five years, that's what I think figure will need an, at least another five years before they are even close for industrial application of their robots. Before they even close. Tesla might get there in two years, maybe in 18 months, much, much faster. But that's a different story. But for figure one, it's going to take five years minimum before these robots become effective in any kind of factory and before they become effective in any kind of real home where you have a no nonsense person, not a Brentwood person. Sorry if you live in Brentwood. I'm not, I don't want to offend anyone. But if you have someone who lives in a normal neighborhood, somewhere in Mexico City or in like Alabama or I don't know, Frankfurt, and they're going to say, well, if I buy the robot, the robot needs to be more efficient than a human that I you know, higher for the home it will take also five years before figure is there, but they don't need to get there. They can sell it to crazy consumers who just have too much money, are too excited about this. And it's millions of people. And now do the math. If you sell a million to people who don't really care, who just want to have a cool robot, they pay you 2000 bucks. You make $40 billion in revenue and you make 2 billion a month in fees. Make it maybe 999 per month because it's too outrageous if you make it too expensive and this thing doesn't work. Make it a thousand bucks a month. You make one billion dollars a month in nearly pure margin just for laughs and giggles. And I think therefore this is exactly the right strategy if figure wants to survive. And it also takes them a little bit off, you know, off the target, uh, out of the target range, the dis elimination range of Elon, because Elon is going to say, I don't care about this. People can buy my Optimus for home if they want to, but I'm not going to put any effort into that. It's a joke. Elon's strategy is very different. Elon doesn't do AI for you or me or anyone. He doesn't do robots for you or me or anyone. Elon has a different plan. And I spoke about that on Herbert and some other shows. I tell everyone, 
you have to understand Elon's brain. Elon sees a, clearly a future of abundance. What does it mean? Future of abundance doesn't mean that, you know, he gives you the tools to create abundance. No, for Elon, that means he builds himself the tools so he can generate abundance across all industries. That's how Elon thinks. He doesn't develop AGI for you or me. He develops it for himself to turbocharge Tesla and all the other companies he has and SpaceX. He wants AGI so he can invent new science. He can invent new technologies. He does it for himself. And the same is true for his robots. And that's why Tesla is on a totally different path. Elon's objective is to build Optimus for Tesla, then build Optimus into a hybrid organic organism, into a cybernetic organism of a factory so he can take over any industry on Earth easily with AGI and Optimus. If he wants to do shipbuilding, he wants to do train building, he wants to do nuclear power plants, he wants to go to Mars, he can now deploy any army of robots with AGI he wants and then create vertically integrated super industries. That, I guarantee you, is Elon's plan. He has no interest in becoming a big B2B robot deliverer, even though he will do that. But he wants to deploy them in Tesla first and then make Tesla into a super company and build a lot of other super companies where he has more shares. In. And that for figure means this is a smart pivot. It takes them off the direct competition with Tesla. Of course, Tesla eventually might crush these people because Optimus will be vastly superior as a robot. But that might be five years, 10 years in the future. And in the meantime, Brad Adcock and everyone else can raise tens of billions of dollars and scale their rewards. So that is my take on it. I think it's a smart move by Brad. I think it's the right move. A lot of people say they get Trevor Milton of Nikola fame uh, vibes from Brad. I understand what they mean. I am not pushing back on this. But Chris Camillo, for example, a very smart and savvy investor who's very deep into robots you know, who would everyone, he went to figure AI, he talked to Brad and the team, and he thinks they're real. He thinks they're very smart engineers. I mean, Chris can be wrong, but Chris is a smart dude and he was there. So I don't think it's Trevor Milton level bad. It might be a little bad, but not Trevor Milton ba uh, level bad. And I think figure one is on a good track now and has a shot in actually deploying tens of thousands of these things. And they might break and everything, but it doesn't matter anymore at home. Okay, I want to talk about one last company, uh, and that is One X Technologies with the Neo Gamma. See, this company, it's a Norwegian company that actually has a very different approach and that is now also getting on the radar because they're actually moving to Silicon Valley now and are raising large amounts of funding. And they have a very cool robot that works actually very differently with tendons and not actuators. So it's more human-like. Everyone thought that's crazy, but they're doing this. I, uh, you know, I dug a little deeper into the CEO. Seems to be a smart guy. Uh, gives me less bad vibes than Brad Adcock, even though I don't know Brad Adcock. I'm not, I'm just telling you the vibes. And uh, so Neo is basically setting up here. One X and Neo as the main competitor for figure. And as you can tell, they're also pushing straight for the home market. The CEO of One X says you need to go for consumers because that's where innovation happens. He knows they get more leeway. So that is the new duel I see here. Figure one versus Neo, while Elon and Tesla will definitely charge ahead, but not creating too many problems for them in the next three, four years, in my opinion. Because Tesla is going to go straight for self-application and straight for industrial application and straight for delivering serious economic value with Optimus. So I will do another video on this, by the way, where I go into the robo wars with all these three companies, compare them a little more in depth, uh, how I see they're going, also comment on some other companies. And uh, we will go from there. I hope that was interesting. The robots are coming. The age of AGI is here. Go to pioneerlands.net, by the way, where we all meet and discuss these things. And we have the smartest minds in the world, the pioneers there exchanging ideas. It's all free. We built that platform, Pioneerlands, for allowing everyone to understand the age of AGI better, for allowing me to understand it better by having your intelligent comments and discussions there. And we are building this community. So go there and see you soon.